Okay, uh, my will now call to order the regular meeting of the Niles Manning District Library Board of Trustees. It is 7 p.m. on Wednesday, August 17th. I am here to take the roll. I'm Karen Sawyer. I'm Karen. I'm here. Uh, Dennis Gabriel. I'm anticipating Diane. Here. 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 Alright. What stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of July 18th, 2018? Motion. Second. Yes. All right. Any questions or comments regarding that? Any discussion? I have a couple. Um, under approval of the minutes, page four starts with Trustee Derblick. Uh, in the bottom on line three, um, I would like to ask to add um, with Karen Diamond's responses, you mentioned the two questions we asked and I kept saying that um, I wanted um, your um, responses to be um, added to the minutes so that was part of that paragraph so if you could just add with Karen Diamond's responses that would be more accurate are you talking about the one that says it the, it's like quite two questions after the last question on line three starts with trustee Derblick and after it says state this question mark and then it, it would say um, with Karen Diamond's responses that's what I asked so are you saying what those responses were or are you I'm asking that I, I asked two questions and your responses be added to the minutes so in this description of what I asked the only part missing was with Karen Diamond's responses and are you suggest are you stating what those were? No, with Karen Diamond's responses is fine because it, it'll just get too right, long. So just say and Karen Diamond responses. Right, with Karen okay. Diamond's responses, please. All right. Well, I will ask if the movement and the secretary accept that change. It's fine. Okay. All right. And then thank you. And then um, page six, change order for exterior painting. Um, I had a conversation with Greg. And um, it wasn't noted. Um, actually, um, I asked that Nedro Decorating, or I mentioned that Nedro Decorating did not submit, submit a completed bid form indicating their cost breakdown and services to be provided. Um, I requested that Nedro submit a com completed bid form and asked for a copy. Greg Tripp said he would have them do so and get a copy to me. So that whole statement of mine wasn't included in where it just talks about he had a discussion or an explanation. So what specifically are you are you saying it should say? Trustee Derblick noted that Nedjo Decorating did not submit a completed bid form indicating their cost breakdown and services to be provided. She requested that Nedjo submit a completed bid form and ask for a copy. Greg Pritt said he would have them do so and get her a copy. I typed it up if you agree to give it to um, Right. I, does anyone else have any recollection regarding that? Oh, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. we're saying that. Right. Okay, all right. Uh, then do the movement and secondary uh, accept that uh, revision to the, their motion to approve the minutes? I have no problem with that. No objection. Okay. Do we need it that long? Yeah, well, it has to say what I Can said. Can I just say that? What would you like to? Well, I mean, can't you just say that? Uh, a copy of it on uh, the revised um well, the key is it wasn't completed at right, all. Right, a revised or completed um, because that's what she wanted. Yeah. Yeah, how about um just a revised Trusty Derblick cost breakdown. No requested a completed bid form indicating <coughs> cost breakdown and services. How's that? Shorter? Yeah. And then 
So I, and then um, Greg Pritz said he would have them do so and get a copy. So I'll get that or something. I'll make this yeah, shorter. it's just okay. gonna be like one. No, good line. point. And so and then the last thing is page seven where um, it was typed what um, Trustee Rosansky mentioned and then what I mentioned. But the three things I mentioned were not at all included in this summary. So it's not at all what I said. Um, the first thing I talked about was the uh, AG Melissa Hollister. Um, it said I spoke with her. She clarified that she never said a trustee who gives public comments as a resident is in violation. That was one. The second one, I asked for an explanation of various levies scheduled in the Kleinthorpe Jenkins Library calendar. So that was specific. In number two, and I think you guys just said we talked about it or something. It says review of legal calendar. Yeah, and I and I my question was specific to the levy schedule in their calendar. What was the last one? The last one is um, Roberts Rules of Order states the agenda is approved by all trustees prior to the meeting and agenda ideas provided at that time. It is wrong to assume the president sets the agenda. That was my third one. Okay. I, th I think as we've discussed before, these minutes are supposed to be a summary of what was discussed. Right. And they aren't you're excluding the key factors, so they're not an accurate summary. I think accurate is the key word. You're just putting in words that don't describe what I said. Mm -hmm. uh, does anyone else want to discuss whether or not this is an accurate summary or a... A uh, reasonable summary of what was said during the meeting? Well, I'm okay with number three being, because it was a lengthy discussion that you had, Carolyn, on getting guidance on each of them. And then we agreed that we would discuss it at this meeting, so I'm not sure we need to have all that exact wording that you just mentioned, because that is the gist of what you said. You, you discussed the process of getting guidance on the agenda. It doesn't really matter if you said specifically Robert's rules say this or doesn't say this. That's a summary of what could you said. To, could we say that uh, something to the effect that if we, we determined we would discuss it at this meeting? Or just leave it? Um, you know, we are, it is on the agenda for this meeting. So really it doesn't need to even be on there. Well, it should be on there because if I didn't mention it, we wouldn't be discussing it at this meeting. That's what prompted Trustee um, Spadoni to mention that it be on this month's agenda. Okay, it, it does say that you mentioned the process for getting items on the agenda. I think it's a pretty accurate summary of what was said. Okay, so that's three. How about one and two? Um, levies, certainly we talked about the calendar and that the calendar does have guidance as to when we should discuss the levy. And so can that there. statement be added, that sentence? She just she asked for an explanation of various levies scheduled in the Kleinthorpe Jenkins Library calendar. I have no objection to that. Thank you. And what was the first one, something about an older person? Um, I spoke with Assistant A.G. Melissa Hollister, who clarified she never said a trustee who gives public comments as a resident is in violation. That was my only fact in, that, in this conversation that I think involved all of us for a very lengthy time. Um, okay, so... Uh, I, I think it, I'm sorry. That's right. Go ahead. What did you say? I said that? I'm okay with that change. It's up to you. Okay. It's up to you. I'm fine with what is written, but I actually I was fine with what's written, but if it really makes that much of a difference, it, it, it's up to you. you can, I don't you, really you can agree or not agree. If Carolyn, we weren't going to be discussing both of those topics today. I might be a little more concerned. Okay, which two topics are you addressing? The two that you mentioned. Are, are, are you there discussing three? Both? The top two. The bottom one, we already agreed to the change. Okay, number one, she spoke with Assistant A.G. Melissa Hollister. 
Is that the one you're talking about? Yes. Okay, so you're that's a no. I from feel you? I feel we're gonna discuss that. So <clears throat> you know. Is it we're discussing her comment? Are we discussing that topic? Uh, Not that, today? Or sorry. am I misinterpreting? Am I okay? So I know we were discussing two of her yeah, things. Can I help you understand the point I'm trying to make? I just want her comment mm -hmm. that she said to me in the minutes. Well, I, I'm just trying to follow Robert. That's all I'm asking. We have a blue motion on the table. Right. Well, I'm trying to explain to trust me. I understand what I'm trying, trying to say. To say. Right. I understand right. it. So, so far, the motion on the table is the original motion with the agreed upon changes by movement and seconder. And um, with respect to page seven, I don't know if you guys have agreed to any of those changes. But the know. first one that she that was that, which was what number three that of her thing? Robert's rules was number three. No, uh, the process for getting items on the no, that wasn't it. Yes, number three, Robert's rules. That wasn't the that. one. I, I'm sorry. I'm so like, which one did was the first one that you oh, agreed oh, to talk about talking to the Oh, so the AG. has three items. Yeah. And the agenda has three. We we said we did not agree with her change for item number three. Okay. I said. Uh, that I was okay with items, her changes to items one and two. Uh, I believe you said you were okay to her changes for item one. Further discussions on whether trustees should be able to speak during public comments. I wanted to add, just say it again, so then she, that she wanted to add that she talked to the woman who told her there is no such thing. Well, that a oh, trustee is not in violation. Yeah, not in violation. I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. Um, my point is that's one of the things we're discussing today. So why and are we I, even? I don't believe we are. I thought we were I discussing that. No, we're discussing the agenda. We're discussing okay, it. then that's fine. If you want to put that in, fine. So one and two are okay. Uh, you want to put that? You talk to that woman. Fine. Review the legal calendar, and you want to put in levy. The levies that are scheduled. That's levies that are scheduled. Fine. Okay. Thank you. I, Diana, can give you this. So just. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion on the floor that has been made to uh, pass, or rather to approve the minutes as just amended. Uh, may have a roll call. Yeah, Karen. Yes. 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 Uh, Diane? Yes. 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 Linda? Yes. Yes. All right. Has anyone registered for public comment? No. Okay. All right. Fine. The next item then on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Tim? Okay. Um, uh, treasurer report. Uh, if, uh, just, just one general comment about it. Yeah, uh, having done it for starting my third year, I am starting to notice our, uh, that we have a, um, a pattern here. So, um, uh, this is very similar to last year's uh, uh, report at, at this month, so uh, if you remember that, you'll see some similarities. <clears throat> anyway, getting on to it, page nine. Uh, so, I'm, uh, so we are 8.3% uh, of the way through our budget. That's the, we're at the first July of the first month of the fiscal year. Um, there aren't that many items to note. Page nine, though, we did get our capital uh, per capita grant of 71,605, so we got that uh, very early in our fiscal year, and that's why that's at 100% of the revenue. Um, as, as last year, we're waiting on uh, property taxes to come in for our, our revenue for the year. Um, I have no issues with expenditures. That was at 8%. That's, that's right with the budget. Page 10, uh, library materials. So what we've got going on here is that there are a number of things that we pay up front um, so that we get a discount for the remainder of the year, and that would be items in uh, the adult books and the downloadables, periodicals, and especially in the uh, online databases, as you see for the uh, actual month there. Um, there's really not much else. Um, you know, I forgot to put it in my report, though. I did have a question on the 
for farming rights? Uh, we have to license any time we want to show a movie. We have to have a license to show that movie, and so that's what that is: is buying a license for this Okay, for several movies. Mm -hmm. as we okay. So it's, it's, it's a list of catalog. Okay. All right, so it's similar in that one. Uh, page 11, the only real item of note on the general administrative is the consultants, and that's a little higher due to uh, some upfront costs, again, for IT consultants that if we purchase um, a, a block of hours, we get a discount uh, on their purchase, and we use those hours throughout the year for our, our, our IT folks. Um, on the bottom is the auto insurance that's a one-time payment for the year as well. And on page 12, the only real liability note there is on the bottom, the liability insurance is a one-time payment. Um, and similar to that on page 13, we've got workers' compensation uh, as a one-time uh, upfront. And then the, uh, that, that's not it, the furniture and fixtures was a little higher. Um, I assume we had some larger purchases that we have doing this month. Though it's a small bucket. Okay. And what is that? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I look at that and uh, oh um, so uh, uh, yeah sorry you told me no no that's right. We bought uh, some cubicle pieces to create additional workspaces in the uh, adult services department. So that's what uh, made that a little bit higher uh, during the month. All right, that's all I had. Um, it looks pretty good so far. Again, it's the first month. Uh, does anybody have any comments on the treasurer's report for the month of July? I, I have a question um, regarding the consultants. Um, that's back on page 11. 11 um, yes. Yep. Um, they're IT consultants for the, it's services they will provide us for the entire year. Mm -hmm. So is it like X number of hours? Mm -hmm. and, and how many hours for how much per hour are we, we committed for, the, that's for the entire year, correct? Uh, well, um, there's, uh, there's uh, two consulting firms. One is uh, called Vertec and uh, the other is called Peters. Uh, uh, Peters is part of the uh, E-rate program. I think it was 1127, if uh, if I'm not mistaken. And 1127. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, no, uh, 1,000. It's actually 1,260. Oh, I get for the year. For uh, well, it's a uh, it's the 20 percent portion because we get an 80 percent uh, reduction through the E-rate program. And for um, consultants? For this particular consultant on a particular list of projects. Okay. So this yes. consultant is part of the purchases you're making through the E-rate program? Correct. Right? Okay. All right. Well, that, that makes okay. sense and, there. And uh, then there's another uh, consulting firm called Vertec. Yes. Uh, we, uh, we paid them uh, $3,000. And uh, we use them for uh, projects uh, throughout the year. Um, I believe that the uh, cost was uh, something along $150 an hour. Um, and the hours do not uh, get stale until after 36 months. So we most yeah, assuredly will use it within the next three years. And. Uh, what do we use Vertec for? They sound like just general technicians. Anything in our in our tech lab? Uh, I, you know, we'll we'll use it. Uh, we use them when we, uh, for example, when we uh, went to uh, Microsoft uh, Office in the cloud, uh, three, Office three sixty five. So they helped us with projects like that. Um, you know, it's it's uh, something that you know Rich is very good at, but wants to have somebody uh, come along with them to, you know, that has done it multiple times and has, uh, you know, the depth and breadth of experience so that, you know, nothing you know, falls through the cracks. So this is actually only, if my math is not totally off, only 20 hours? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, great. Thank you for that explanation. 
Okay, are there any other questions or comments regarding the treasurer's report? All right, then we'll move on. I'll now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $280,000. Oh, I'm sorry, can I ask a, a question about the bank register report in press? I just saw it. What is, what is your question? That'll be in the next, that's after the motion uh, for right, payment yeah. of bills. Okay, so let's wait till we get a motion. So over. thank you so much. All right, uh, as we're saying, I'm going to a motion to approve payment of bills for operating expenses of $280,000. $302.52 and payroll expenses of $280,328.92 and special reserve expenses of $60,000 for a total monthly expense of $622,631.44. Is there such a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All right. Any discussion or questions? Carol. Now? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, about bank register report impressed. I was just wondering what, what page? Oh, sorry, page 26. I was just wondering what, it looks like an out of the ordinary check to the Illinois Department of Revenue, but I was wondering what it was for. It's for sales taxes on the uh, uh, book sales that we have. Uh, we pay quarterly, so it's roughly $122 a month uh, on average, based on uh, this number of 366. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions on this item? Amber roll call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Candy? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. All right, the next item on the agenda is the director's report. And we've also asked Susan to update us on the strategic plan recorder. So I think that will be part of your report tonight, too. Is that right? Yes. Okay, fine. Um, please, uh, please tell us about it. All right. Uh, well, I'll start with the most recent thing first, which is that this morning um, was a TIF review board meeting for the two newest TIFs. Uh, we got the information packets on these two TIFs after the last board meeting, So, and then the meeting was this morning before your next meeting. So we were not able to consult you on it. I did ask Karen and um, we discussed it and basically as they always say at these meetings the review board basically you can you can either vote yes or you can vote no but you have to have specific things that you're objecting to in their specific plan and it doesn't matter anyway because it because it, and if you choose not to vote that counts as a yes vote. so and, and basically it's a purely advisory thing anyway. It really is a decision of the Niles Village trustees. It's not really our decision. Um, so not having any strong reason to oppose it, because it's going to go through anyway, it seems like. And, and it is going to improve Niles, and that ultimately will improve things for the library. It doesn't necessarily in the very short term, but long term it is going to be improving the community. Uh, we thought it was better to, you know, cooperate with the partners across the street and so we did uh, vote yes for both of those of the new tips. So now a total of six tips in Niles, one of which is coming off the books uh, next year. So then there will be five and four new ones and then the two week triangle arts tip you know, on two week leading tower. So that was what we did this morning. Um, I also just wanted to point out to you, I get a month, I report every month uh, from Commonwealth Edison about how we're doing in our energy savings, we have this energy savings program, mm -hmm. and um, I, back when I started getting the reports, there is always a line that says how you do compare to comparable public facilities, mm -hmm. and for a long time, we were a little bit more than most of them. Now that it is swapped back and forth very consistently every month, and uh, so far we've saved um, just for this year, we've saved three hundred sixty-three dollars, like for this month, comparable to those other facilities. Good. And so, um, every month to month, it is always lower. And I just that is thanks to all the work that Mr. Day has been doing and replacing lights with LEDs and um, doing all you know, all kinds of work to try to make the building more energy efficient. When he turns, you know, times the turning on of the heat and the cooling, and he is very very diligent on this point and it is saving some very real dollars. So are we compared to other libraries? Or I, it doesn't say specifically no. what public facility yes, we are being compared against, but I mean, I'll we, take it. we have like 
much longer hours than oh, like City Hall. Yeah. Yeah. They're from nine to five, generally. Yeah. So, so, so what they do is they compare as a group all public facilities to themselves over the last over the last, let's say, uh, 12 months, the same month uh, this oh, year, a year ago. Years, this, years. No, to, them, to themselves as a group. Okay. And they say, as a group, public facilities are up, uh, in this last report, they're up like two or three percent. And then they look at, at our specifics and they take, you know, a, peri a billing period, a current billing period, okay. and they compare it to the same billing period a year ago. And they say year over year, you're actually down two or three percent. So that gives you a gap, you know, where we're outperforming the group, you know, by let's say five percent. Okay. And we also right. are improving against ourselves a year ago. So both of those things. Yeah. I so think uh, we, as residents, get those types of reports mm -hmm. from ComEd, how you mm -hmm. compare to your yeah. neighbors, your yeah. energy efficient neighbors, and so forth. So I imagine it's something similar to that that you're looking at. Yeah, very much. Okay. Right. Uh, going? Um, I, uh, you know, we have to complete the Illinois Public Library Annual Report, so we are uh, getting that finished. And when it gets due on September 1st, I'm going to bring it to you next month for you just so you get a chance to look at it. Um, and then uh, now the, I want to talk about what we've accomplished in the last quarter with the strategic uh, plan. Um, so I'll just go through this real quickly. Um, so on um, focus one is exceptional customer service, and one of the things that we're work, working on is upgrading our wayfinding and navigation through the physical space. Because with the four floors and things being tucked behind other things, it's still a confusing space. So um, a group of us attended a, a, a webinar on interior signage, and one of the terms we learned in that is that you have bump spots in your building, which are the places that people come up to it, and they kind of go, I don't know where to go, mm -hmm. and have to figure out where to go, and that's what you have to look at to figure out do you, what do you need here that will tell people where they need to go. So we have been following up on that and figuring out what kinds of signs we could have in those different spaces. We've agreed upon a mixture of signage and screens to mark the various rooms, and for the next quarter, we'll be getting quotes on some of those things and bringing those to the board. Um, we have uh, another investment in customer service is improving our internal and customer facing processes, improving efficiency and ease of customer service interactions. We have continuing to been continuing to improve the catalog and the holds um, process. We are working on, Sasha and Susie are working on a library app that will make using it on your phone easier than it is currently. Make it up both the catalog and the library's website easier. and Combine them into one app. Um, we are developing a way to provide library cards outside of the building. It, it, in the past, it's, uh, we haven't been able to do it kind of on the spot. Now we'll be able to. Uh, another investment is developing consistent standards for customer service. And um, so we've been working on cross-training some more. And so this past quarter, we've had uh, one of the patron services team leaders has been trained to work on the children's department desk. And she was there uh, during the super busy period of summer reading. So she really got trial by fire. <laughs> and uh, part of the reason that we do it that way is we, I want people from different departments sitting on other desks, partly so they can observe how things are done differently at the different desks and come up with better, you know, whatever the best practice is um, between those two things. And then we also have digital services department librarians being trained for the reference desk here on the third floor. Um, then focus two is expanded community engagement. We're supposed to be developing a task force to, to gather information and explore options for expanded service in the northwest part of the district. Um, we had a training on a product that we have called Gale Analytics on Demand, which we used quite a bit in the strategic planning, and they have uh, continued to improve it, so we got trained more on how to sort of dig information about the demographics of the people that live in the district. And uh, now we can get better information not just on our own patrons that have library cards, but on non-patrons. So that would be interesting. We got a quick look at it, but we will be able now to pull more information up for ourselves cool. and be presenting that to you. Uh, we also are working with CCS to get that the newest information from Polaris into that database. They, um, they were used to doing it with Cersei Dynics, now they have to figure out a way to do it with Polaris. So they're working on that. Um, we are investigating the possibility of, um, I, I had not known, and it, but apparently it is true, that anybody that owns a house in the unserved area where they don't pay the taxes to anybody, if that is on an area that is bumping up to our district, 
they could join the district at any time. They could yes. if, 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 let's say, the, the houses across mm -hmm. the street were not part of the library mm -hmm. district and were not paying taxes to anybody, mm -hmm. they're what we call unserved, but because they're contiguous with the district, they could just come in the library and say, I want to join your district. And we would give them a library card. We would notify Cook County that they're now part of the district and they would start paying taxes. Oh, they don't have to file some kind of petition to okay. do that? No, but a, a group of them would have, to, would have to, but the contiguous ones don't. So, so individual, so individual households could Individual do that. households or businesses. I cannot imagine a business doing it, but sure. yeah. So theoretically speaking, we could sort of take little bites out of that kind of little by little. So if someone that. joined, would the next person then be able to talk to go? Yeah, yeah. that's like there. Wow. As long as it's uh, not part of any other library district. Oh, yeah, no, we can't. Yeah, but there are only library districts around here. We're the only library district. All right. But you could have like one house that's an island or a house. Oh, yeah. Very odd borders. That's about that. And that's how it came up is that Gail Borden was talking about that. And they have a, a, a district that they describe as Swiss cheese. Okay. So they right. probably don't know that, right? Oh, they probably don't. Or maybe 25 years ago sure. they knew, but sure. now we don't. So, anyway, it's just a thing to kind of look at in this expanded community engagement. We also are studying the changing school board boundaries of District 63 to see if the unserved population is clustered at one of the schools and it turns out they are they're almost all at washington school so we may try to work more closely with washington school and how we can get cards into those families hands uh, we have uh, another investment is explore community partnerships and establish the library as a central hub of information for the community so i just wanted to list out some of the things that we're doing uh, we're getting increasingly visible in the community we have the coming together in Skokie and niles partner township partnership where several of us are attending uh, we have Susie Wolf on the Chamber Board. We have Judy McNulty on the Chamber Program Committee. Judy is also appointed to the Niles Commission for Economic Development and Neighborhood Renewal. I am uh, on the Niles Public Arts and Culture Council. Neil O'Shea will be appointed to the Niles Historical Society Board next week. Really? That's, so nice. nice. That's appropriate. And then in addition to that, we have Victoria, who is an elected member of the District 71 School Board. We have the school liaisons out right now at all of the school open houses, registrations, curriculum nights, being very visible out in the community. And that's just some of the things that we're doing that we kind of uh, getting the library more visible to the community. We also invited the new principal of Culver School to come over and meet with us and talk about ways that we can work together and have initiatives together. That was a very productive meeting. Focus three of the strategic plan is called focused staff development. Train staff to develop and rely upon data and analysis in evaluating success of collections, services, and programs. We have CCS coming out to do training on their reports modules of this new software that we have that will give us all kinds of information to guide collection development decisions. We'll be able to see what's popular, we will be able to see what's not so popular. Um, and and it, it gives a lot of kind of technical information. And then Cindy also has been pulling together, she, Cindy is the one who, uh, you know, your, your statistics sheets here, she is the one who finalizes these every month. Everybody puts their statistics in and then Cindy makes sure that they're all clean. And she's been, uh, over the past year, tweaking it little by little to make it line up with the Ippler data that we have to be turning in. Mm -hmm. But now she is able also to pull, in, pull reports, and she's just been doing ones on programs that are community engagement and how much, uh, how many people we have had contacts with, and, and some of our events and things like that. So she's starting to work with this data now. I think that's very helpful. Uh, focus four is enhanced community awareness and alignment. And uh, a lot of the information in that one is to do with Chapter 1. And Sasha has been working very hard on gathering data for that. We had originally said that we would come to you with a recommendation this month. We are not quite ready to do that. That's going to have to wait for next month. But he has been gathering a lot of data this last month. And I thought I would have him explain a little bit about what he has been doing. Thank you. Okay. Sasha? Summer here at the library. And in particular with the Chapter 1, um, the canal is in chapter one. Uh, one thing that we've been doing actually a few months ago is we have been doing during our program something that we call the How Did You Hear survey. So it's very simple. Whoever's hosting the program, as we're making announcements in the beginning, welcome everybody. They simply ask for a show of hands of how did you hear about this program. 
So some of the options were chapter one, email, library website, social media, poster in the lobby, or other. Uh, some of the more recent things that we've been working very hard on is um, usability testing of chapter one, a print survey, and an online survey. So for the usability testing, over a two week period, we actually met with 12 library patrons of different ages and actually got two teens, which is really exciting because usually it's of a particular age that wants to do the usability testing. And uh, we asked them a series of questions. We had the newsletter in front of them and we asked them of their initial thoughts of the look of it. Uh, is it too, too much, too many words, too many pictures? How's the legibility? Uh, we also did a little bit of a scavenger hunt to see if they could find certain things and if they couldn't, they kind of let us know that you know, maybe some content is hidden. Um, and those were each 30 minute sessions and I do want to point out uh, Robin, who is the public relations and marketing coordinator, who actually, coincidentally, uh, has a, a career uh, in her previous life of market research, so she was very, very helpful in, in doing some of this, uh, picking the right questions, and, and even while she was doing the one-to-one, -one, just have somebody else on staff that has that experience. Um, I'm very grateful for her, for her help um, during that time. Um, the other thing is an online survey that we ran for two weeks, and it was via Survey via Survey Monkey where we promoted it through our e-newsletter, social media, website, and also the journal did a little article on it that people could take the survey online. Um, like I said, the duration of that was just two weeks. And we asked kind of more simple questions uh, about the newsletter, their initial thoughts, and so forth. Um, since we couldn't do a one-to-one, -one, the questions were a little bit different than what we asked the 12 participants that came in-house. Um, that same survey we have a print version on. Um, it's been a little bit of a challenge to get participants to do the print version um, because uh, we only have so much time to just kind of drop everything at a table in the lobby. Uh, but that's actually one piece that we want to work on with this extension of time. Um, we, one of the biggest pieces is it's great to get answers in-house, but we struggle to get answers outside in the community. Um, we were supposed to participate with Bike Niles, and when we arrived at Bike Niles, there really weren't that many, there wasn't really an audience there at the time for us to really ask anything. Um, we were supposed to participate in the National Night Out, Niles National Night Out Main Township, but if you recall a couple weeks ago, um, it was, it kind of rained the whole day, and we had to, to pull out, unfortunately, out of those two events, uh, those three events. Uh, we did also reach out to Maine Township to have a table in their lobby, so as um, their residents come for services and so forth, if we could do a little one-on-one. -on -one. Either we didn't get an answer back or they declined, I'm not really sure. Um, Robin was the one that was working on that, and I didn't get a chance to ask her before she left today. Um, between the print surveys and the online service, surveys to this point, we have about 180 surveys over a two-week period. Um, so like I said, what's next is we would like to do some more outreach to get more more survey results. Um, you know, people that maybe don't come to the library, but um, live in the community that maybe do get the newsletter and either they keep it or they don't, and we want to know all that information. Um, so that's kind of what's happening next. Um, thank you. Sasha, would you mind if I ask you a couple sure. questions? Mm -hmm. I realize there's a few surveys that you have going on. Um, your usability testing mm -hmm. was the paper document that you set 30 minutes with everyone? Correct. Okay. So, and that's something you were doing in the library, correct? So there was three things. So the usability thing was a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute um, user experience session, if you want to call okay. it. That was one thing. Then there was a paper survey okay. that we actually had a table in the lobby, so as people were coming and going, they would, they would be able to fill out the paper survey. That paper survey was also made available online. So the paper survey in the library and the one online are the same? Correct. Okay, this usability, the questions, is that different? Are those questions different than the other one? So the usability questions, let's split it in half. What the paper and the online questions were were part of it, 
plus the ones that were particular to point here, point there, which we can't ask online because they actually have to do it in front okay. of us. Right. So they were asked the same questions as the online okay. and the print, plus the ones we wanted to know since we actually have okay. face-to-face -face and then And then one other question. I know you're trying to reach people in the library and thinking of going to events. What about um, trying to actually, well, I know, let me take, I have to take a step back. Reaching patrons via e-newsletter. Who receives the e-newsletter? So currently we have two main e-newsletters. So one e-newsletter is um, patrons that want, they can get the chapter one via e-news. Oh, okay. Or like via email, I should say. Mm -hmm. Basically like a... We upload the document to a website, and then they can kind of flip through it. Okay. Um, and then there's also something called a Library Buzz e-newsletter, which is basically a bi-monthly e-newsletter, kind of taking apart the Chapter 1 over the quarter, so we want to keep on reminding people okay. in case they miss things in Chapter 1 about what's going on in the library. And that's posted somewhere. It's not emailed to people, correct? How do you get the Buzz newsletter? So you have to opt into it. Okay. Um, we have a sign up form on, on our website. So on then our website. I would go to the mm -hmm. site and I would read it. Okay. So if you go on our home page, there's like a blue header that I think it says e-newsletter sign up. Mm -hmm. And then if you click on there, you'll see library buzz as an option and chapter okay. one as an option. So that's what that is. Okay, so I, for some but, reason. But it's, it is, I, I think I, there was a slight misunderstanding there. You were asking if they read it online, they actually get it, it's emailed to them. It would be, they go online to sign up for that newsletter, right. and but then, then they, comes it them. comes to their email box. But perhaps okay. they, Text letters are not archived. Okay, the but the the customer has to go to the site. We're not saying we're not sending questions to them. It was on these two sites where they go anyway. They would see the, your questions or whatever you were doing. Well, That's not right. Okay. No. How do you want it? No, it, it, it's that um, it, we send things by email, like so many businesses do. You get things in the email, so it all depends on if somebody bothered to click on your most recent email, and then if they clicked on it and they opened it up and they read it, there would be an invitation to all of the people that got that, which is some thousands, I think. So you did email. It was, it's, yes. Yeah, it's an emailed newsletter. Where, right. where, and this, these questions were there. So I guess that's what I'm getting at. Right. So the email that went out, how many, are those card holders? How did you come across That's what he was saying. That you go, uh, that's an opt-in, so people, anybody that wants to get our our newsletter so comes times a month. Okay. They have uh, they they go in and they say you know send me your newsletter. And, and, and you're and you're thinking that 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 arrangement's about a thousand people. I, I don't remember what he said the circulation on that is right now. Uh, the circulation on the chapter one e newsletter. So that goes out quarterly, just like the real, just like the print version. Mm -hmm. That's about like nine hundred subscribers. For the library buzz e newsletter, we're about fourteen thousand subscribers. So this. Questionnaire Correct. was on the buzz and was off. So was emailed to the subscribers. Okay, so that's a good 14,000 that you reached. Is that what you're saying? Well, the problem with e newsletters is um, one thing that we do have is we do have analytics, and there isn't something called an open rate because. I mean, everyone over here, just think about all the emails that you yeah, get of advertisements and stuff. How many go into junk, spam, how many you really actually want to read. Uh -huh. So unfortunately, you're not reaching everybody at 100%. Okay. We are sending to everybody that's on that mm -hmm. list. But, um, you know, I'm not sure how certain like email servers like Gmail or whatever read us. That's so they read us as advertisement, and then they'll stick us here. And then if you really care about us, you can like probably right click and move us to your okay. inbox kind of thing right, so you don't miss us. Fine. So. Even that's just a, a sampling. It's not at a hundred percent. No, but it's it's still a large number. And then my my other question was, the the mailing process of this chapter one newsletter, which is through the post office and it goes to all these carriers, is there no way that we can actually reach the people who are receiving this in their homes to get those question questionnaires to them? Because talk about usability. They're the ones who are receiving it, or it's sitting in downstairs or some nasty person throws them all in the garbage like so I'm wondering are you going to be able to reach a portion at least of you know the how many thousands mm -hmm. you send through the carriers is there any any idea or plan to try to do that or is that not a possibility we didn't really talk about adding a survey in chapter one necessarily um, well I don't know in chapter one I you know because it's cheap to send out this bulk rate mail 
I was wondering if your if some questions could mm -hmm. actually reach the people who were already mailing chapter one to. So you're saying like creating like an additional mailer or putting the survey like in an envelope and sending it Something via like these that. routes. Or, yeah, and, and then the other thing is these um whatever you call this mailing where you don't pay first class. It's usually really cheap, but it sounds I don't know if it's cheaper than what Greg quoted, what you paid for your chapter one. But I guess my point is I wanted to see if we could reach a lot of those people all over. Mm -hmm. And if maybe we could figure out how we might be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, not so costly. But it was just a thought, but you answered all my questions now. I totally understand what I read fifty times and I still didn't understand <laughs> it, so thank you. Yeah, so the, the other things that we've been working on with chapter one is we gathered, I have a stack of like this many newsletters from other libraries, so we have been uh, looking at, we have about, uh, I don't know, three editions of a lot of different ones, and so we can look and see how other libraries are delivering their news to their community, and there's, uh, you know, we're fairly similar to a lot of them, but, um, but we've been analyzing those and kind of seeing what we think is effective, and um, what the trends are, and um, so now we have some more work to do on this, um, but I think that we will be ready to give, make a recommendation to you next month. And I want to thank Sasha and his staff for all their hard work. Uh, and then this um, work plan that we've been working on was supposed to run from July 2017 through December of 2018, which means we're in the last quarter of this plan. So part of what we will be doing in this quarter is developing the next plan for the next year. So it's the same strategic plan we've been working on, but now you know finishing up the pieces we haven't completed from this plan and carrying on with the rest of the strategic plan. So you can look for that in December. And that will be the January 2019 through July 2020 working plan for the strategic plan. Okay, all right. Um, Thanks very much. You know, I was, I was wondering, I know that you have that, uh, your notes sort of typed out there. Is that something we might get from you later on in writing as to sure. um, what was done? I mean, you, you mentioned yeah. really a lot of things, and um, I think it's useful to just sort of put a record of what was done, and the rest of us can sort of review that too. Well, what, what I might do is um, uh, when I'm giving you the next report mm -hmm. the, the next plan I will write up a final report on this part of it and so you can see okay. the things that we have done from mm -hmm. that okay that will be like a look back all right um, okay so that was the strategic plan now did you have other things to discuss no, during it. your director's report that's it unless you have any questions um, no um, I have a question if no one else does okay about the director's report I'm looking at the um, PACOM um, page page 29 this is office changes from Greg um, it looks like we are implementing an expense reporting feature in PayCom um, with Lizzie Lisi. Lisi? thank you Strickling is she part is she with PayCom is that it no she oh no for us. she replaced Kathy toy about a year ago Oh, so our employee mm -hmm. is working with PayCom mm -hmm. to create this. All right, so my, I had a couple of questions. Um, it says that um, it's for expense reporting. Is it specific expense reporting mm -hmm. or everything? Expense reporting. Meaning what? What expenses would be reported through this PayCom? Um, mileage. You know, Travel? Is that what we mean mileage. by expenses? Mileage. So if... Um, uh, if an employee uh, has uh, expenses, maybe buy something for a program, uh, a small something or so other. So every purchase would, go, would be considered an expense and go through this program? That employees are out of pocket. And what's the process now to reimburse them? Uh, well, there's a, um, uh, there's a paper form that's, uh, uh, that's filled out and submitted with, uh, uh, with receipts. Um, a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of transaction amounts are well under a hundred dollars. So, um, you know, there's uh, numerous, uh, there's, you know, there's several, uh, you know, in terms of volume. I'm sure. Right I'm sure. Okay. And um, you know what they uh, what they do is is they take time and they take effort um, for something that you know is is uh, is is not that significant. 
Right. You know, so if you're doing something for $15, then you really ought to be, be paying attention to the uh, Ingram invoices that total $15,000. I'd rather have her be more accurate sure. than, uh, on the larger things than on this one. Yeah. Now, you mentioned mileage and program costs. What about actual travel? Like when you go to a conference, would all that information be done through there? Or yes. So that could be done as well. Now, what about the approval levels? I mean, how would that work? Uh, they roll up. Uh, so if uh, somebody in uh, adult services is, you know, is, uh, expends uh, some money they want reimbursement for, uh, they'll fill out uh, they'll fill out a request and submit receipts. That'll go to uh, Dodie Frisbee. But I meant with the paycom system. Yeah, that's this is what I'm discussing. So they will still provide paper documentation. Yeah. Well, there's there's an option to provide paper documentation, or you can provide electronic documentation. So paycom is going to be in addition to the process you have now. It'll uh, it'll supplant it. Okay. All right. So, um, well, I understand. I know. The, I know. I understand the process for paper trail reimbursement. But as far as the um, paycom, how is it? Is it the department head would be responsible for her department's mm -hmm. submissions. Exactly. And then whoever's responsible for, I don't know, travel. I don't know if that goes up to you guys. Well, that'll that go, that go to Susan. Okay, so then that's how it'll all be approved. And Susan will review it. And the idea is instead of shuffling paper, it'll uh, uh, it'll happen electronically. Oh, I'm sure. And then, um, then lastly, if say, the, well, people who submitted electronically, what if you needed to view this? Is it you just it's all electronic. You don't have to get paper copies. You can see everything mm -hmm. like PDF or whatever mm -hmm. it's called. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. There, there still would be paper receipts in a file. I mean, they still could be. No, but I meant we are tossing them or anything. Okay, but yeah, but at least. It, if, if it's an electronic process as opposed to paper, all that information, you can always, if some yeah. comes up and you need to refer to it, it's right. there. Mm -hmm. and, and I also would mention that they do have to get their travel approved in advance as well. And there's a particular, there, there is a particular form that they have to fill out, and that they will still have to fill out. That goes with our policy. Sure, sure. And how long before you think this might uh, be ready? I think uh, October 1st is our target. Oh, awesome. Okay, well, thanks for that. Okay, uh, all right, next on our agenda I see uh, communications, liaison reports, secretary's reports, but I don't think we actually have anything under those items. Mm -hmm. So we can go right to new business. And our first item under new business is approving uh, administrative policy 3.33 on the disposal of surplus policy. And property. And uh, following that, we have the statutory provision and the proposed policy. So, uh, to get this on the table, do I hear a motion to approve uh, Administrative Policy 3.33 on the disposal of surplus okay. property? Okay. 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 Hmm? 48. Well, 40, yeah. 47. 46. 46. 46. 46. 46. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Motion. Second. And a second. All right. Um, Susan, you want to tell us what uh, prompted uh, yeah. the crafting of this policy? Yeah. Um, somebody had asked me, they had old, old e-readers, and they were wondering, could they just put them in the book sale? And I was, uh, I wasn't sure if that was appropriate or not. So I said, well, let me go look at the policy book. These and were e-readers that belonged to the library. That belonged to the library, but you know, like eight years old and not cutting edge by any means. And um, and so I went to the policy to see what exactly it says about, you know, because we've always done an ordinance with a lot of different technology things attached to it. And I think that they just would, they just would stockpile them until they had enough things and then they would do an ordinance all at once or they would be getting rid of a whole class of things and they would do an ordinance for that. So I went to look to see if there was a policy to cover anything. We realized there's not a policy for that. There's not even a policy that says that we have the right to be discarding the library books. There's nothing there concerning it at all. So uh, then I asked my fellow library directors what they had. If you know, they just were assuming that was a delegated thing or if they had a policy. And sure enough, very many of them already had a policy. So um, I looked at the law. 
I looked at their policies and I drafted something that was a match to the law. Um, the, there were, and some of the stuff that might sound a little bit odd, like the part about um, things being displayed at the library and a public notice and all that, that is from the law. I can't, that has to be in there. Um, so it basically is just to give me the authority to be disposing of things, some of which we already have been doing all along, but just to make it clear that we have it, and, and the law is very clear about the amounts of money, you know, what things you can, what you can do with the library property for certain amounts of money. So it's the being less or equal to $1,000 is one category, the 1000 to 2500 is another category, and then there is everything over that. And then I added the part from somebody else's library policy about no preferential treatment shall be given to library trustees, the director, library staff, or members of their immediate families, just because I thought that that would be a good, a good practice. Don't think people should be taking advantage of the fact that there's a stuff. So I recommend that you pass this. We have run without one for many, many years, but I think it's kind of ridiculous that we haven't had one. Um, okay. All right. Um, I, I'd just like to start off with some uh, comments here. So um, the statute does allow, allow the board to dispose of property in various manners. And the, the statute, if you compare it, it's not, it's not numbered exactly the same, but the categories are pretty much the same. Um, so I suppose we have to decide, first of all, is it our intent to allow our director to dispose of all types of property in this way? Uh, and if so, uh, then I would suggest just a slight change in the wording. Uh, right now it says items of property having a current value of less than $1,000 may be at the discretion of the director. But then the next section, property of any value, may be donated or sold. It doesn't really say that's at the discretion of the director, but I think, I think we want it to be that way. I don't, I don't know. Um, so, Where are you second bullet point. Yeah, second, second bullet point. Right here. Page 48. So I guess, first of all, we want to decide, uh, do we want to delegate the authority and to what extent? And if we do want it to delegate the authority to pose, dispose of property in all, this, all these fashions, I would suggest that we take out the last sentence of the first paragraph and substitute the board delegates to the director the authority to one, deem property to be surplus, and two, dispose, dispose of the surplus property in the following manner. And then our director could choose which one of any one of these methods of disposing of property could be used. Did you get a specific change? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't answer you. Um, yeah, the, I'm the, bullet point two. The, the, it's not in bullet point two. Well, I would take out, it probably could take out at the discretion of the director at bullet point number one, because I'm essentially moving the authority up to the heading paragraph uh, to make it clear that the director can dispose of property in any way, in any one of these following no. ways. So I'll, I'll read that again if you want me to. Please. Know. Okay, thank right. you. So in the opening paragraph, I would take out the last line, property deemed by the director, and substitute the board delegates to direct the director the authority to, number one, deem property be surplus, and two, dispose of that surplus property in, in any one of the following manners, I would say. Um, so we can, and we can discuss those following matters. Matters, um, you know, anything less than a thousand dollars, I don't, I don't think we really want to be bothered with, and we just want it to be gone um, if it's not being used. Um, property being maybe donated or sold to other tech-supported libraries. Have we ever done that? 
we've, uh, I think when we got rid of a lot of furniture and things at the renovation, there were things that went to other libraries. They got offered at first. I don't know how much of it actually went to them. That is the first point in the law here, is that mm -hmm. you can offer it to other libraries. So, so you know, we've, got, we've tried getting rid of other things that way unsuccessfully. So. What do you mean other libraries didn't want them? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually we have old stuff. They don't want any of them. Okay. All right. Well, shouldn't that second bullet point have a dollar value associated with it? No, well, not according to the law. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be. I mean, we we yeah, could craft our, our policy a little bit different, but it, as long as it's within the it says personal authority. property of any value may be donated or sold to any other tax-supported library or to any library system operating under the provisions of the Illinois Library System Act. Well, that seems pretty open-ended, though. I mean, you could, could donate, the, donate something the whole like $50,000 or something. I mean, I, it seems like it should have a problem, in my opinion. It just seems a little open-ended. Um, do you have any dollar value you want to suggest? Well, what's the difference between that bullet point and selling something? I mean, if we're saying that anything less than $1,000 you can discard, trade, sell, and then the next one is? Property of any value. Any value can be donated. <laughs> well, it just limits right. who you can give it to. I mean, with the first item, it, you, can, you're, you could be conveying the property to anyone. Correct. But the second one is to any other tech supported library. Well, wouldn't you just add that to D? Where it's got an explanation of who you give it to? Well, it's limited oh. by the, uh, the dollar amount. Yeah. Okay, so what so are we trying I, to accomplish here? Um, I think we're just trying to accomplish not having to review uh, ordinances which <laughs> donate stuff that collects around the library. And, um, and it's being broken down by dollar, by a thousand dollars, and then she's got certain parameters that we're yeah. getting Yeah, I mean, you know, this is in part tracking the statute, which sort of breaks some things down by statute and breaks other conveyance of property down by who it's being given to, um, such as the second bullet point. Well, I'm just, I, I would hate to be, I would hate to learn that the library director um, donated something to another library that was worth a hundred thousand dollars okay. just because she or she decided to do it and and wouldn't we as board members no. yeah. think well maybe we all should. right well you know you want to come up with a, a, a dollar amount uh, or you know we could we could strike that line altogether and if it if you want to limit it to a thousand and Certainly, uh, any, li any library would be included with any other educational, cultural, government, or other organization. So I mean, if that you is true. Right, I uh, would, I would strike it. All right. And if the director wants to bring it to the board to donate something so with a value, yeah, then we can make a decision. Fifty thousand right? dollars. Oh, fifty thousand right. dollars. Right. So, so eliminate that line. Right. right. In my opinion, okay. you know, I don't. Want all right. I mean, do I, again, do I sort of have a consensus on that before we move on? Right. We're eliminating the second. Yes, Alright, the next one uh, about the sale. Do we, have, we ever had a sale like this? The we furniture sale. Oh, the furniture oh, sale. Yeah. Okay. Alright, and it was displayed at the library. Did we have a public notice? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, yeah. Alright, I guess so. I forgot that. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Motor vehicles yeah. traded for, for the fair market value. I think that's fine. Right. Um, yeah. What about the next line? Is there are there any uh, applicable statutes, statutes that govern personal property? I mean, it's basically just saying you oh. have to follow the law. Oh, okay. Just reiterating that point. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm okay with you. All right, and, and certainly I think the last bullet point, I think we, we should agree with that. Mm -hmm. Of course. All right, then I have just one question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
the director's going to handle getting rid of all this stuff. Right. Will we ever know that last month she got rid of a list of stuff? Will it ever come to our attention or we won't have a clue? Will there be a record of it somewhere? Um, I mean, I she I mean, there'd be some be, kind of record. Yeah, because they can't just be disappearing. She'd have to keep a record somewhere. Well, we don't have a 100% inventory of the building, so there's like, back when we opened in 1998, there was an inventory of every single solitary thing in the building, but that was not made. Oh, no, no, I'm not asking um, you to do that. So there wouldn't be anything to kind of, a list to pull off of? No, no, I'm seeing now. If you decide you're getting rid of whatever. Mm -hmm. Let's say um, we're, we're getting rid of, you know, 20 books that are over, 20 years old. Yeah. Okay. They just go in the books. I mean, you guys don't ever see Oh, that. I'm thinking of furniture. Well, I mean, some of that has gone on just because I wasn't thinking about the fact that we didn't have anything guiding it. It's just, you know, old broken stuff that just goes out the door usually, and you don't ever get told about that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think that's a fair point. I just, uh, well, like if you're donating it to some. Maybe it must have some. Well, I mean, rather than just give it to someone, you would have a record. Not that we that we're going to be looking at everything you're doing, but God forbid if something happens, you could say, "Well, you know, I did agree. He did agree. You know, we gave him this, and it blew up in his whatever." But you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just saying, should we have some sort of record of what we're doing, or? Um, you know, I, don't I, want to I make understand what you're, what you're saying, Carolyn. I, I don't know if we want to keep track of every single little book that's right, given right. away. Right, right. No, no. And I didn't think but, you know, even um, I don't know if items, you know, above a certain value are given away. Or if we or, give something. Or, uh, sold. Uh, oh, can you name anything that would fall into that category of a humongous amount of money that we gave away to somebody? No. No, well, no I don't give no, away money. Yeah, no, well, but well, well, it would be a good yeah. example of something where we might like donate it to the teen center, and we have sure. over the years done that. So yeah, that would be right. and, and old computers. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I mean, I, I would okay. think that I would tell you. I mean, I would put it in the director's report that we had made this donation. Or, um, mm -hmm. But I do just. I guess I wouldn't want to be tied to reporting on every time. Sure. No, no, I agree. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. So you're not concerned about giving stuff away or selling it to someone? Like, there's no liability here, is there? I mean, give well, we, stuff to people. We certainly don't give it with any warranty or anything like that. No, no, I meant like they can't come back and. Well, that's what she's saying. There's no, that, okay. that we don't warrant it for a specific purpose. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. it's as is. You, know, you got yeah. to enjoy it. It's as is. Yeah. Yeah. Goodwill takes anything you take yeah. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. That's true. That's where a lot of it goes. Okay. Well, then, yeah, then that's simple enough, yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments on uh, the policy? All right. Um, Diane, I think you have the wording that you had something to change. Right, we'll send you a few minutes. Oh, okay. All right. One or the other. Um, but would you like to use a roll call now? So it's designated. Correct. So Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So our next item under new business is discussion of how to place an item on the agenda. Um, so um, what, I, what I'd like to do is just refer can, to. Uh, can we take a like five minutes, or can I just go? Sure, you can. You can. It will take a three-minute break. Right? Three minutes. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Just want to get out of here. You're yeah. in. Why? I understand. It's just I want to be able to last. Don't waste time talking. I know it. Two minutes and thirty. Okay. Excuse me, can I, Karen? Can I mention something before I forget? Um, we kind of skip past um, liaison reports, and I do. Um, coming back out of break now. Perfect. And um, Carolyn, you asked that we uh, go back on the agenda a little bit to liaison reports. Yes. Uh, Friends of the Library specifically. Is that correct? Yes, please. Um, Friends of the Library um, had a meeting July 26th, and um, they talked about um, coming up with ideas 
in September for um, what to purchase with the money they have. So um, I know Dave Lasky said that he was going to give us some thought over the weekend. I don't know if they're going to email people and ask what you think, but in September they'll be discussing um, plans for purchasing whatever. You know, they'll come up with a few ideas uh, with the money they have. What, what kind of money do they have? Um, I don't know. I assume whatever it was. I, I don't have. I didn't, Rich wasn't there with a copy of the report, so I don't have that. I, I think it's whatever it was. The last time they reported. Why did they get their money from the mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the money they had prior to this little prior. split. Um, so I don't have that in front of me. Do they mention anything there. about what's going to happen with the um, tax? Like if they're paying for it? Oh, well, we no. actually paid that tax. No. Oh, we had to pay the tax. Well, we money. paid the tax on current sales. No, on ours. Yeah, oh, we yeah. just paid we that. Paid it going, right. back, going back to the time when we took over the so. Right. Uh, we just had that on our, our bill paid today. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's so the just, most recent, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't know okay. yet. Yeah, so there's yeah. just as. All right, and then I got an email before the meeting today that Chris Anusiak's father passed away, and the visitation is tomorrow. So I just wanted to make sure I let everyone know. It's at Skya, um, 3 to 8 p.m. Okay. okay. I think he was sick, um, actually, at this meeting. Um, a couple, of, He had a leave, and a couple of the people were talking about that. So I guess he wasn't doing well. But I wanted to make sure I got that out. And then, um, can I just throw one other thing in trustees' calendar? I had two questions. Did you have a question about the calendar? I did. Two. Um, what page is that on again? 40. 40, okay. Um, let's see. October 17th, we'll have a levy ordinance. And um, I'm, I'm guessing that's when Greg will provide us with the presentation. I wanted to ask if it would be possible to get the presentation in our board packet so we can review it. Are you talking about a PowerPoint? Yes. Um, well, let, let me ask a question about that, too. Will we actually be discussing uh, the levy in September or not till October? It's really up to you. Um, I think. I went based off what we did last year, but I think in prior years it had been October, November. So whatever you want to do is fine with us. I understand why you're saying it's September it. because it's mentioned in September. Well, and, and also this no. guideline that we have. I think this might have been fine thirds. I can't remember where this came from. They mentioned doing it in September. I mean, we don't have to pass it until, what's our deadline? Is it December, December 31st or something? Yeah, a little earlier than that. but. Um, I'm going to say it's like the fourth Tuesday in uh, November or something. You know, it's then we have to do it before November because our meeting is after that, right? The last date to do this is the first Tuesday in December. It's in this uh, effective board meetings okay. packet that you have. So, um, well, Greg I don't need to prepare it, mm -hmm. so maybe it's up to him. Um, Greg, do you think you'll be doing a PowerPoint this time? Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll update prior years and, mm -hmm. and do the report. But generally, uh, for uh, presentations, uh, they come after we do the mailing to you know, the after the, uh, the agenda. After the book goes out. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, yeah, so we continue to prepare and uh, publish for the uh, for the meeting. Okay. Well, you know, if you can get it out to uh, time, that would be great. Or even if not possible, um, in the board packet maybe by email. So those of us who want to look at it ahead of time and try and formulate any questions we might have, we could do that. Can we um, confirm the date then? Is it September or October that you want to do this for? Is that up to me? Well, if there's two on here. There's um, No, I'm, I'm just saying that the, the, you know, the, the calendar and, and the agenda is up to you know, mm -hmm. people other than me. Okay, so 919, we have a determination of the levy amount. Is that when you give a presentation, or do you give No, it? generally, yes. You do, okay. So what do we want to do about the date? Leave it there, or? 919? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's the date of our meeting. Okay. Um, so I'm is that something that will be ready by 919? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, 
The only really concern I have is that we do have the Chapter 1 presentation in September 2, which might take a little while also. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think what we'd probably like to do is we want to hear the Chapter 1 presentation, and maybe if we can have that go through the PowerPoint, people can have any questions they might have, they, they can ask them in October also. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's, a good, that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, okay. And then, okay, so just to clarify, you want a presentation on the levy at the September board meeting, but you're not committing to determine the levy at that meeting. You right. may decide, you will put determining the levy on the October agenda, and then adopting the levy um, on the November agenda. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I mean, we could determine it on the September agenda, but we could also put, put that over to October. Okay. I mean, if everybody's ready to do that in September, we could, we could just take care of that, but you know, we will leave ourselves enough time to do it in October if we want to. Yeah, if there's too many questions. Right. Okay. Thank you. And then I had just one last question. Um, September 19th, first day to collect signatures on nomination petitions. Is that the packet, Susan, that you have available downstairs for people who are interested in money for the library? Uh, we can put together packets. It's also available online. Uh, the candidate's guide came out last week, so yeah. All right. I think in the past I was sending people to the library. Will you we, we can send do that. Yeah, we were just talking about that last week. We oh, okay. Back it's together. We able to put them together. Yeah. Obviously. So does that mean September nineteenth would be the day they'd be down there? So we could do it a little before that. Okay. Yes. All right. Great. Okay. I'll just note that. All right. Thanks. All right. That's all I had out of sequence. Okay. Thank you. All right, so um, let's go back to where we left off on the agenda, and that is how to place an item on the agenda. This is item 10B, um, and we have some materials in front of us which are relevant to this, and then I'm going to ask Susan to give us a little historical background too. So first of all, we have our bylaws, um, and if we look at I don't see any page numbers on it, but the third page of the bylaws under library director, uh, last paragraph on that page, it says the library director shall prepare an agenda for each meeting, bring before the board such items as may require board action, and any information which may be of need to the members of the government of the library. Any information which may require advance studies shall be. Oh, wait a minute. Is this right? Have I got this? Yeah. Advanced study shall be furnished by the Saturday first meeting at which the matter is up to be acted upon. So that's our bylaws. And then we also have the Niles Main District Trustee Guidelines. And they're the last page of this other um, packet of information we have, which shows in the front oh, of the board meeting. Okay. So the last page of that is the Niles Main District Library Trustee Guidelines, um, which Susan tells me the date that we had adopted these was May of 2017. And they provide, these guidelines provide, at the very bottom under paragraph C, setting meeting agendas. Trustees who wish to have something placed on the agenda should contact the board president or the library director at least one week before a board meeting. These requests will usually be honored, but it's up to the discretion of the president to manage the board meeting time effectively. So we have these two documents uh, that uh, govern setting an agenda. And Susan, can you also speak how this has been handled historically? Yeah. Um, I, when Morgan was the board president, he would want to know at the beginning of board packet week, which is the week before uh, we have this meeting, we spend the whole week before that getting ready for it, and he would want to know very early in the week what the draft of the agenda was, and he had complete control over what was on and what went off, and he, um, he made it very clear to me that I would be fired if I did not follow his instructions. So I prepared the agenda, but he made sure that it fit what he wanted to do. Then Linda became the board president, and we would work together on the agenda a little bit. But by and large, it, you know, most of what we do is pretty pro forma. So, um, so we would I would consult with Linda if anything unusual came up, and we would discuss things occasionally if there were things that were likely to be uh, more issues than other things. But um, 
it was very much back and forth, and then it has worked pretty much the same way with Karen as well. Um, so that um, I think there have been very few instances where somebody's request for an agenda item has not gone on the agenda, and, uh, and in that case, it was something where ultimately it is, I was going by this and saying that it was the board president's um, final judgment on whether something, whether we would be using the meeting that way. So Is that so they have not any to date. What do we mean that way? Well, whatever gets on the agenda is what takes the time of the meeting. So it's up to the president of the board to keep the board meetings going. So it's up to them, you know, how they want to handle that. But putting up an item on the agenda doesn't necessarily mean we have to extend the time of the meeting. It could be on the agenda, and then due to time constraints, it could be moved to the next month. But it sh what I'm trying to say is subject area should make the agenda. Topics should be on the agenda, whether we have enough time to go through them or we decide we want to just uh, table that till the next time. But to not put it on the agenda just eliminates the subject from even being noticed. And that wouldn't affect our timeline. We could still just not discuss it and postpone it. But I feel like things get lost in the shuffle when I didn't put it on because we don't have enough time. It, yes. I'm, I'm just reading here on the Illinois, oh shoot, I'm going to lose my page. I'm sorry, where are you reading? Illinois Secretary of State. So I'm looking at the Illinois Public Library Trustee Manual. And I think there are some quotes from it too. But there was here, of course, I'm going to hear maybe this is it. Um, it just basically said that with the agenda, let me get to it exactly what it was I had here. Um, effective board meetings. Uh, I'll, I'll find it. But it basically it said that you take the most pertinent topics and that's what you focus on so that you have the, the most important items on the agenda that need to be addressed for the time allotted. It doesn't mean that just anything that anybody wants just gets to be put on the agenda. I know when we were looking at the agenda, we would always say, oh my gosh, we have such a packed agenda as it is. With the time allotted, will this will have to wait, or it just doesn't get on? But it's always that you there's certain specific things that need to be on, need to be addressed, um, and again, your bylaws will be the guiding factor. So I'm not sure what is there something that wasn't able to be put on? Is that the problem? No, I'm trying to come up with a procedure. Well, I think it's a little a easier than sending emails and wondering if anybody's seeing them. That's why I brought up the um, Robert's Rules of Order where it states that all the trustees need to approve this agenda, which means we would all be aware of the fact this agenda is going to be approved by a certain day. If you wanted to put something on the agenda, you'd have to do it then. So are you well, recommending a change to the guidelines? To tell you the truth, I'm not sure which guidelines I'm following. I feel like all these pages are a little different. But honestly, so, can I just say yeah. something? I don't really think that's the time when an item should be decided whether it goes on the agenda or not. I think what we've been doing really in the last couple months has really been effective. If you want to bring it up, bring it up to everyone at the board meeting. And then once we kind of discuss it, it got onto the agenda. Mm -hmm. So but it's not like one person just wanting something on the agenda. It's kind of us saying, yeah, this really needs to be discussed. Let's make sure it gets on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I think that's really more transparent. I think it's actually kind of working. It's far from transparent because any of the items that you bring up under the topic other are not on the agenda. So nobody who goes to the website to see what's happening at the library at their August meeting are aware of the topics that trustees are going to bring up because we're hiding them all under other. Oh, I don't think we're hiding them. We're totally hiding but them. But we don't know what the subject matter is. I'm just saying but to allow Are you saying us, to eliminate other? I'm saying to allow a trustee who has an item they would like on the agenda. 
on the agenda, so anyone who sees the agenda is aware that topic's being discussed. Either it's boring to them or it's pertinent and they want to pay attention to it. But by just shoving everything under the word other, you eliminate that opportunity. Plus, no motions can be made. It's not under other, it's under new business. What's so under new business? The article we're talking about right now. Today. So no, I'm asking of how to place an item, which is what you wanted placed on the agenda. Did you not want this, this place on the agenda? Okay, I think you're missing my point. Okay, I'm <laughs> saying my my response to why I don't want to come to a meeting and, and under other, we would just openly discuss what we want to talk about. I would rather, when the agenda is created, that my topic be placed on the agenda so anyone who sees the agenda for that month is aware that it's there. Well, have you followed these guidelines to get items on the agenda? I've tried, but sometimes, you know, I'm sending an email to Karen who's busy at work and, you know, it's a I little know, hard. You're right, I'm busy, but I don't think there's been any instance where I have not looked at one of your requests prior to the board meeting. Okay. Time. And, and uh, I know on a number of occasions I have put things on the board agenda or asked Susan to put it on the board agenda at your request. Um, and not everything you requested perhaps has gotten on the agenda. Some There have been some things when I thought the wording that you wanted to use was not appropriate, uh, such as one time you wanted to put on discussion of why board acted legally at the last meeting. And um, I said, you know, if you wanted to bring, bring up a topic like that, you could bring it up under other, which I think you did. Um, but generally, whatever you've asked to put on the agenda has been placed on the agenda. And, and again, even though it's not on the agenda, you can raise an item under the other section. That's but always a possibility. it eliminates the opportunity to, to pass a motion. Uh, it you, takes away. You can't do it at that meeting, but you right. can do it at the following meeting and if I, everyone on the board feels that they want to discuss it again at the next meeting. Okay, and that's my point. If I want to bring up a point at, an, at a meeting and I would like to present some information to everyone, I would like to do, I'm, I'm sure I'm doing it for a purpose, and if I'm going to present the information, I don't want to wait till next month to see if it's okay with them if I want to make a motion. I feel that everyone's item on the agenda should carry the same weight. Whether you agree with me or not, just vote me down. So you want to make changes to the policy? Well, first of all, tell me what policy are we looking at? Well, we've got two policies. One's in the bylaw clause and one's in the uh, um, guidelines. So, trustee guidelines, is that is that pertinent to what we do see? Is that what we're saying? That's setting the meeting guidelines right. and setting the meeting agenda would be the one we talked about. Okay. So right now, you're saying that all I have to, okay, so, and it's still either contact the board president or the director, do either one or both? Mm -hmm. I think either one is fine. Okay. All right, so then one week before the board meeting. And of course, that's dictated by the Open Meetings Act. If you, you know, we, we have to know, we have to put any uh, items on the agenda that are going to be on the agenda. At least a week in advance. So wait, that deal. doesn't sound like enough time. So Wednesday before the Friday that I'm getting this packet is when I'm going to tell her. Isn't that short notice? That seems a little short to me too. Yeah. Seems like it should be the Monday to me. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's like wow. So Carolyn decided she wants to put an item on the agenda, and it go. You know, we either get a Friday night or Saturday. Is that what we need? So uh, you want to make it more at least two weeks before Well, ask Portland? Linda. I mean, Susan. Well, I mean, it, um, we're actively working on the agenda during that week. It goes out on Friday afternoon, and anything, can, it, but the agenda cannot be changed uh, 48 hours before the meeting. So I, I'm just asking for enough time to um, get it on the agenda and get it distributed to everybody. So realistically, if you say Wednesday, it's almost in the 48-hour point. No, 48 hours would be the Saturday, Saturday 5 o'clock. So if I send you an email on Wednesday, what if it's three o'clock? Is that too late? It's getting late, but it's already it's, Thursday then. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, to work on it, right? So 
Well, I mean, presumably there's not a lot of work for me to do on the agenda. It's just putting it on there, but I would be consulting with Karen or she would be consulting with me. That we need enough time to do that. Is that enough time? Oh, well, I, I, I don't know that it's, it's, oh, it's, it's not a lot of time, but it has, has not been too short, I don't think. So then Wednesday before the board meeting, send an email to Karen or Susan. Well, it says contact. So you could call me. Yeah, well, I, I would probably send an email because I could write it, and then I would call and say I sent you an email. That's fine. Kind of thing. That's fine. Okay, well then, that takes care of that. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other discussion of placing an item on the agenda? All right, then we need to talk about our next item, again, which was brought up last month, uh, discussion of trustee expenses with possible uh, action. Uh, so, as we recall, um, there, is, there was a state statute passed requiring that we have a policy regarding travel expenses for trustees, which we did create, and um, See, I think we have it in front of us. It's 4.16. Oh. And then at our last meeting, some questions came up regarding uh, future approval of trustee expenses. Um, does anyone want to uh, start the discussion regarding this? Well, I brought it up because um, Linda had an expense that we had to vote on, and uh, one of the trustees decided to um, vote against paying it, and it dawned on me that if we all had done that, then uh, Linda would be out $2,700. So I think we should have a policy that allows trustees to um, bring up their um, a, 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 a budget or, or an exp possible expense, maybe not the exact expense, but you know, a rough expense beforehand to get a vote that the board is going to approve it. Okay. before they incur those expenses. That so I think, seems reasonable to me. yeah, right, I understand what you're saying. So I think the pertinent part right now about 4.16 is on the bottom of the second, second page, under number five, approval of expenses. Expenses for members of the library board trustees, travel and lodging expenses incurred by any member of the library board trustees must be approved by a roll call vote at an open meeting of the library board of trustees. Um, so um, I think what you're suggesting is, uh, Tim, that a board member may seek pre-approval for expenses up to a certain dollar amount. Is, is that correct? I don't think we need to limit it to a dollar amount. I think pre-approval expenses. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Are you taking talking because like you, you said uh, approximate? Range. Approximate, right. Or you could even do this, the travel, the meal, the lodging. I mean, because it might be hard to judge how much a meal is going to cost you. Or well, there's, really a, it there's a lot of that. incidental expenses that you can't really predict ahead of time. It might have to be, because I mean, there is a per diem, there's a certain amount of money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's so so a the meal and so on. Right. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, um, well, let me rephrase it. I, I'd like to know what is our procedure now when going to a conference? Um, I know everyone calls Diane and she just works her magic, but shouldn't we maybe have a procedure in place where, um, I mean, I'm not positive, but I think airfare is astronomical after you know so many days before you're flying like uh, should we should we set up a, a, a policy or a procedure where if you're going to travel that you need to notify Diane about your um, plans I don't know is it a month in advance it, of the it travel isn't there. it isn't there so do we already so, have that? yes right here 
Where are you looking at? Receipts with the, no, that's receipts. I thought it said something that was like a 30 day or something like that. Well, that's a different issue. Let's, can we focus on yeah. the one issue that I'm bringing up? Well, well go ahead. Okay. So I, that we, we can yes. finish that. Yeah, go ahead. And I'll be in agree to that, right. and then we can move on to the second issue. Okay, well, I disagree I, with blanket approval. I think, okay. you know, just giving carte blanche is the same thing as just coming back and it is what it is. I don't understand what's the difference. Can I ask if yeah. her expenses were last year's budget and we didn't have any of the, it was within budget, right? Within budget, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, within the amount that was budgeted for trustee expenses, right? I think, yeah. We, I don't think we've even came close to our mm -hmm. budgeted amount for our expenses last year. I think um, that was part of the, the discussion because the one trustee didn't want us to have a budget for that. Yeah. So, uh, well, okay, how do we resolve this in terms of uh, uh, just uh, approving expenses without any uh, dollar amount mentioned or with up to well, a maximum. I don't mind adding number or, four, a number four that says board members seek pre, may seek pre-approval of an estimate of expenses before they are incurred. They are incurred. Mm -hmm. Well, don't they do that already with Susan? Don't yeah, no, yeah, Susan does, doesn't approve board member expenses. No, not sure. approving, but you are aware. Well, she's aware of it, but well, we're that's putting in. Susan in a precarious yeah. position. Right. She's the director. The board is deciding whether or not to approve. Right. Mm -hmm. I think. I so think so, so in this case, Linda should have come. I'm just I saying know. that. This no, is for the future. This is for the future. This is for the future. So that next time she will come a month at a time. Any of us. We decide. Any of us. Right. Say, can can she go to this? Right. Yeah. So, right. what is the language that you use? I had said the uh, board members uh, may seek pre approval. May seek pre approval. Of an estimate of expenses before they are incurred. Okay. So, this means. Well, that's what I would like it to be, actually. Yeah, actually yeah. Because, I, I mean, let's say, sure let's say right. tomorrow I learn about a seminar which is taking place four weeks from now, but just before the next board meeting, and I don't have a chance to get pre-approval. And, you know, it's it's mm -hmm. in downtown Chicago, my expenses aren't that much, I decide to go, and I do seek re reimbursement, but I, there was no chance for me to get pre-approval. So I, I would like to say it, it may, make it, uh, make it under May, uh, I would run the risk of maybe my other board members would say no, so I would, you know, I would sort of take that risk by spending the money myself if I didn't get pre-approval. Um, but I think we want to make it an option that a board member could do that if they wanted to. I think we need to be more specific in what we are talking about. I think expenses that tend to increase, which are airfare, hotel, and possibly car rental, would be something that requires advanced uh, planning or uh, what Tim's trying to put together some type of advanced approval. But if you if you need to attend a golf outing dinner or if you're going downtown to a conference and that price is not going to change, there's no need to worry about that getting caught up in this scenario. We're talking about expenses that can go from 300 to 700. Well, I tell you what, here's what I'd like to do. So travel, I'd like to make, I'd I like to make a motion. I'm still talking. I understand, but, but you keep going to a separate so topic. So travel. Carolyn, you went to a separate topic. I'm, I'm still talking, I and understand. I resent let's make, your let's, interruption. Let's make a motion to either approve or disapprove this statement that I said, and then okay. go on to the second topic. All right, so we have a motion. Is there a second? to the motion that was just Can you right repeat here. the motion? The motion is to add item number four. Can you just read it to me? Because I'm going to make it out of it. What are we approving? Well, um, I'm, I'm telling you. All right, this the item, the motion is yes. under number five, approval of expenses, to add number four that states board members may seek pre-approval of an estimate of expenses before they are incurred. All right, do I have a second for that motion? 
Patty? Okay, fine. All right. Uh, any discussion on this specific language which has been proposed to amend our travel expenses policy? Should pre approval have a time limit or a timeline? What's pre approval? The day before I want to. I mean, well, pre approval would be by the board. Right. So, so they have approved. to be at least a meeting prior to. So, so we should state that pre approval at a previous meeting before well, travel? And how else would you do it? Yeah, I, I have no it. idea. Some, well, then I think it's important. I think it's important to state exactly what we mean. Okay, well, I disagree. I'm not going to. Well, like Karen that. said, if she wants to go to some conference and there isn't a meeting, I mean, there isn't a board meeting. She doesn't want to feel that she's going to be out of luck and can't uh, actually, that's actually chance. I'm saying that that's it would be. That's I said that I, you know, if I didn't get pre-approval, I could go, but I would be running the risk that the other board members would say, eh, we're not going to reimburse you. And that's that would be just too bad. Well, and then are you saying that you can also go to a conference that's in Los Angeles and uh, make all these plans at the last minute? and not being responsible and it's okay? No, I'm not no. saying that. I'm well, saying what's if, the if, difference? I, if I went to Las Vegas next week for a conference that had something to do with libraries and came back and said, okay, I spent $10,000, know, yeah, all of you could say, no, we're not going to approve that. Hope you had a good time, Karen, but it was well, on your time. Not necessarily. So, um, how does pre-approval of expenses without any date help us keep costs down? That's the purpose uh, of this. That's outside of the wording on this. I'm, I'm asking, can we have a discussion on this wording to either stay as is or change it? If you want to change it, please tell me how you want to change it. If not, okay. Then which wording up. are you referring to now? The wording for? that I just gave you, Carolyn. Okay. Oh, that no. I, to me, it's, it doesn't. It doesn't state anything specific. Okay. Can we move on to someone okay. else's discussion? All right. Yeah, does anyone else have any questions or comments about the motion which is on the floor? May I make a tiny suggestion? Sure. That it not be a separate number, but it be added on to the paragraph on expenses for members of the library board of trustees, just for clarity, because the other things apply to employees or yeah. trustees, and that's a different process. For I, I think it would make sense to put that sentence under five. Where are no. you looking at? It would be under five one. It would, it would be added on to five one. The, the next sentence. It just would be an added sentence. Okay. Yeah. Can that that would make sense. I think uh, you agree with that uh, change? I do. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. No, I don't. Because, no. Okay, were you the movement day? I forgot you were. Was I? I was not. I did not. Okay, no, my, my. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Who seconded Tim's motion? I thought I did. Okay. okay. Do you agree? with the change to the motion on the table, which is just to move the sentence to a different spot. Yes, because okay. it fits right. in where you're saying. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, so fine. The motion is slightly right. amended. It's still on the table. Right. Is there I any other? Do you need to say it over anyone? Okay, the motion it. is now to add uh, on uh, number five, item number one, uh, another sentence at the end of the paragraph. Mm -hmm. That sentence says, board members may seek pre-approval of an estimate of expenses before they are incurred. Okay. Okay. Two, can I say something? Yeah. Sure. To cover Carolyn's thing by the board on today's sentence. Board members may seek pre-approval by the board. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm okay with because that. Because doesn't okay that cover that you have to do it at a board meeting? Right. Okay. Instead of going to Susan. By the board. Yeah. By the Who's then okay. stuck in the middle. Because right. the board That's is fine. the one who is right. approved. That's right. Okay. Okay. Does that cover it for you? Okay. 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 I will read it. Okay. okay. I'll read the amended mm -hmm. sentence. Yeah. Okay. Board members may seek pre-approval by the board of an estimate of expenses before they are incurred. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Tim made the motion to second it? Got it. I did. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I think we're ready for a roll call on that motion. Okay, so it's Tim. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? I am saying. Patty? 
Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay, all right. That passes. Uh, were there any other comments or discussion I have about a uh, trustee expenses? Yes. Now, we're, we voted to allow a board member, if they wish, to seek pre-approval. Right. So now, how do we address last-minute um, arrangements that are more costly? How do we prevent it? What do we want to do about that? Do well, we have something in here that I missed? What if it's pre-approved? No, it says you may seek pre-approval, which right. means you don't need to. Right, right, right. right. So well, you are at the risk of not having but the agreement. I'm not, but I, I'm not, I doubt very much this board will change the voting pattern. My concern is we should have something in place where costs don't skyrocket, whether it's, no, let me let me finish. We'll make a motion. Whether it's, can I have a little dialogue here? Because I, I know you can't yet. wait. I want to hear a motion and I want to vote it. Okay. Well, so, you so, have it so thought so up. You, you know, it's amazing. He could talk and everyone else could well, talk. You guys hang me to the cross every time. I'm just so tired of it. But here's my point. Susan's stuck in the middle. We're, we're trustees and she, she thinks she has to do what we tell her. Kind of puts her in a bad position. But here's my point. If, if there is a conference, and, and she knows it's in August or it's in January, we kind of don't. Is there some... No, we do. She well, knows we it's, it's right here. She I know. puts it on the calendar. And, and that's the last time you see it. So somehow well, yours well, got that's lost or in the shuffle. So I'm I saying, have, I don't know, being so last minute. So it I'm wasn't saying, last minute. What happened, if you heard... No, I didn't hear what happened. What happened was I had thought that Diane had made my arrangements. There was a miscommunication. And I thought they were already done. So it didn't happen. Okay. So then I made the arrangements only after I checked with Susan. And you weren't going. No. I get it. No, 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 no. Wait, no, no, I get it. You didn't know. I get it. No, I didn't know. But, mm -hmm. but then when I did look at the air first and I saw that they were around 600 I was like, no, I think that they're really expensive. And I said, well, you did... You had planned yours months in advance. Right. I said, I don't want to be out of reach of what it is, how much was here. She, hers was like $50 cheaper months in advance. So I was like, okay, I'm not, I can show you the text. I'm not out of line. And she's like, no, I'm not. So actually, the plane fare, even in advance, was ridiculously high. So I had checked that because I wanted to be very responsible. Well, Susie Wolf got a good deal, but that's not my first no, no, point. No, no, no. Let me, wait, let me just wait, finish. Hold on. Yeah. She also stayed with her friend, which wasn't said. So her hotel expenses were a lot less because she stayed with a friend. No, I was comparing time. airfare to airfare. But I get, I get what you're saying. Hers was like 300 and some bucks. Okay, here's my point. So I think that this whole, this, this dropping the ball occurred because maybe we need to change our little method of communication here. You know, I know we're supposed to know there's a conference and we're just supposed to pick up the phone and call Diane Winberg and, and well, things are just you supposed know, this, to happen. This is right here on our so what I, I, what I'd I like, know the next conference, the BLA is in motion, February of 2020. Can I, so I, can I not clear it all? Uh, well, you know, motions aren't clear either. So, Diane, what I'm Probably saying, if there is a, a method, like if there's a conference, mm -hmm. like would it be... Um, out of the ordinary to send us an email uh, this is happening on this date please respond if you plan on attending and then there's some you know there's some back and forth communication and follow-up then you'll know she did it or she didn't do it I mean I, no, and I'm not I, asking I, you to work that no, I think this was a one-time event because I just found the one time before I know that there are many trustees other times that have gone I don't think there ever was an issue or a problem. Well, and not only like that, I know that there's always it's always brought up in at meetings. Early bird registration is ending yeah. soon. Right. If anybody wants to go, let me know. I, I think that's always talked about and said. said but so I think that everybody is pretty diligent with it. I think this was a good one time. I recall being reminded a few times every time yeah, it comes It's just a one time yeah. glitch of maybe maybe it's called maybe it's called life. 
Yeah. So, <laughs> much. so then, so then <laughs> right, then so I have another. It's like life. <laughs> yeah. right. So I have another question. Are there any expenses that are not approved? Or when we go on a trip, whatever we incur, we get reimbursed for? Well, if you buy a new outfit, I don't think we're going to pay you back for that. Isn't there, am I miss, am I, I am under the impression you're given a, a specific amount for like food and right. stuff like that. Yeah. So if you, you decide to go to some food. top chef, whatever, whatever you spend above that is on you. Yeah. So right. So if you want to go out and have all your money at dinner, then so be it. Have a okay. bagel at the continental breakfast in your. All right, I okay. think I did notice one other thing. I think the important part, too, is to stay at one of the convention hotels. I mean, all of it was written in there saying that that's what you should do, and that's, as long as you follow those guidelines, that's where you get the discounts. Well, you know, there was one other thing. Oh, here. You had late checkout on your last day of $75. Okay, now, to me, that's an unnecessary expense. Well, you know, we've already so are we this. paying that? Why would that be an unnecessary expense when I'm at conference all day mm -hmm. and my flight is not until later? So then that's something that we just assume will happen. I mean, I've never no, gone but anywhere. guess what? The, the convention lasted five days. I went three. But what does that have to do with late because, checkout charge? Because I would have could have stayed yeah. two more days. I know. I think this Linda would have over. Please, she would have I was over very so, so anyway, so here's what I'm trying this to say. Okay, when I go on vacation and I gotta get out by twelve, I get out by twelve. I'm just saying, do we have any do you responsibility? We have to pay at a premium at a breakfast at we, seven in the morning. Been, you're gonna do a late you're gonna do a late check in. All right, okay. but you no, know no, we, we already no, discussed no, this. We need to pay seventy five dollars. Right. Right. Wow. Okay, this discussion is over. I have one other thing to just follow up. Do you want to point out on the calendar that the Illinois Library Association annual conference is in Peoria on October 9th, 10th, and 11th? So if anybody wants to go, they are notified that that is coming up. And the board may seek free And you may seek pre approval if you choose to go. Unfortunately. Um, so I think we've heard about the Illinois conference before. It's not as narrowly tailored to uh, uh, our needs is the PLA, but will maybe one or more of your staff members go to that, or do you know? Uh, well, Sasha will be here since he will both be presenting and getting an award. Ah, great. Um, Congratulations yeah. again. And uh, I think a couple of digital services people are going to Okay. All right. Bye. Um, okay, so that brings us to the end of the agenda. Uh, I don't think we have any other unfinished business, do we? Is there any other? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So, so motion. Second. Okay. And I'm roll call. Aye. Yes. I guess do I know if we need to roll call. Aye. 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 A